our last lecture ended with RTGs, radiothermal generators, and how they are used to provide power for things in the outermost part of the solar system because the sun's too dim. So what we want to talk about now are the actual pioneers uh, that launched out into the outer solar system uh, and the voyagers. Uh, Pioneer 10 and 11, they were approved late 1960s, uh, about the time we were just landing on the moon. This is actually before we'd even tried a slingshot uh, to uh, Mercury. And so they were launched, in the first one, Pioneer 10, 1972. This is about the time that we were launching some, uh, one of the Mariners and slingshotting to uh, Mercury. And then Pioneer 11 was launched in April of 1973. Uh, they were launched on a rocket here that uh, was one of the more advanced rockets at the time. And uh, the pioneers, very rudimentary sort of things, even by those days, uh, they didn't want to send their, their best spacecraft out there. But these were, these were really cool things. I remember uh, I was a kid when these things were being launched, and they were talking about it and some of the, the instruments that were on board uh, and what they were looking for. Uh, what we have here are a variety of things. We have the RTGs that are sitting here, sticking off the side. Uh, 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 we have magnetometers uh, on booms that are sticking out, you know, here a long ways away from the rest of the spacecraft. Uh, we have uh, a variety of other sort of things that are sticking out. Uh, 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 measuring things and uh, uh, we also have uh, interestingly enough we also have uh, the fancy is asteroid meteoroid detector system basically this is just a panel that was sticking out a little bit uh, with an exposed surface and very sensitive uh, receivers on it so that if something bumped it or hit it a little bit it recorded it and the idea was, as this flew through the asteroid belt, it would record how many things bumped into that, and that would go a long way into designing, you know, the Voyagers that were coming after this. Because uh, the Voyagers, you know, they, they, they were, they were going to be souped up Mariners, but they weren't launched yet, and they were toying with the idea of putting armor plating on them to protect them from all the little meteoroids that might be flying around in the asteroid belt, but the heavier you made it than the less scientific instruments it could carry and so that was not something you wanted to do if they didn't have to so this would actually measure just how many meteoroids were out there um, had a big dish antenna uh, here to radio signals back towards Earth. It measured infrared light, measured charged particles, measured cosmic rays, measured uh, all kinds of, of space weather type uh, stuff just to find what the space environment was because they had no, really no idea. So uh, Pioneer 10 launched, uh, actually flew through the asteroid belt uh, uh, and arrived at Jupiter, uh, and and of course Jupiter wasn't, you know, we had to figure out where Jupiter was going to be when we got there, and as it flew by Jupiter, it discovered several things. First of all, when it flew through the asteroid belt, neither one of the pioneers uh, just recorded very many impacts. In fact, they recorded more impacts in the vicinity of Earth. Uh, Earth's gravity had pulled in a bunch of little micrometeorites that were flying around. We actually found more micrometeorites near Earth than we did near the asteroid belt. Like I said, the asteroid belt is huge. And even though you got a lot of asteroids out there, a lot of them bumped into each other and fragmented and made a whole bunch of little meteoroids, it is so huge. Space is so huge that these things are very far away from each other. So there was really very little out there. And it was, it was kind of a pleasant surprise. They found so little. So they didn't have to worry at all about armoring up the Voyagers. However, one thing they did have to worry about was when the pioneers got to Jupiter, they found that Jupiter had a massive uh, magnetic field, and so it had like supersized Van Allen type belts around it, radiation belts. Uh, radiation actually was more of a hazard to the spacecraft uh, around Jupiter than were the asteroids uh, or meteorites in the asteroid belt. 
And so uh, that 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 changed the design of the Voyagers to up armor them not against impacts, but to harden the electronics against uh, the electromagnetic effects. Pioneer 11 uh, launched uh, uh, about a year later, arrived at, uh, about a year later at Jupiter. And so Pioneer, uh, 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 Pioneer uh, uh, 10 was flung off from uh, Earth, Earth to Jupiter. Jupiter tossed basically out of the solar system. Uh, Pioneer 11 was actually tossed all the way across the solar system to Saturn, which was on the other side of the solar system. Uh, this was to, to see if we could actually use Jupiter to toss you know, in a direction that was going to be in a different direction than, than the, the, uh, the easy way. And so that actually worked perfectly fine. Uh, means that we really had worked hard to get the actual uh, idea correct about how to do these uh, slingshot effects. The first picture is sent back, Pioneer 10 picture there on the left of Jupiter, and Pioneer 11 a picture of Saturn. Uh, the Pioneer uh, 10 picture of Jupiter was actually really cool because that was a better picture of Jupiter than we typically were able to get with uh, ground-based telescopes. Uh, now, these were not very sophisticated cameras. These were basically like low definition TV cameras. And so uh, they were not very, very sophisticated cameras. Again, they didn't put the super high duty stuff uh, on the pioneers. They saved the, the better cameras for the Voyagers. By the time you got to Saturn, it was so far away, it had to do a really long time exposure. The rings and the Saturn itself tended to be different brightnesses, so you, you can either get one or the other. And so the Saturn picture is way over, overexposed. <coughs> but we did get the rings, and we got the shadow of the rings on the planet, too, which is also kind of an interesting thing that, that you can see this from Earth, but this was a different viewpoint than we were able to get from Earth. And so this was a major step forward. So that gives us the pioneers. Uh, I collect stamps. Uh, first uh, post office actually issued in 1975 a first day of issue, uh, uh, a stamp here of uh, pioneers uh, going by Jupiter. And so that's a first day of issue stamp right there. Now. Since these were the very first things that were leaving the solar system, uh, there were some questions as to, what, well, what do we want to do to commemorate the first human object to leave the solar system? And so Carl Sagan and uh, Andraden, or Ann Sagan at that time, uh, uh, and Frank Drake designed a plaque that was going to go on the side of each of the pioneers. Uh, the plaque was going to be the special sort of plaque uh, that would sort of symbolize this. It was mostly a public relations stunt. The idea being, you know, that 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 if anyone ever found the Voyager, the plaque would tell them something about who made it. Uh, rather, if, if the plaque was ever found by anybody who found the uh, pioneers, the plaque would tell them who made it and, and something about us. Uh, um, this thing was going out into deep space. It was not headed towards the nearest star. If it were headed towards the nearest star, it would take tens of thousands of years to get there. It wasn't, so chances are this thing wasn't going to be found for hundreds of thousands of years or millions of years at the earliest if it were ever found, and the chance of it ever being found is like close to zero, but it was still kind of mostly a public relations stunt, uh, uh, you know, this, this sort of thing that's just kind of a cool thing just in case. And so there's the plaque. Uh, let me explain a couple of things about this plaque uh, uh, to you. Uh, uh, it shows the solar system. It shows nine planets there. Uh, uh, even though we now realize that's not quite right, there's really eight big planets and several dwarf planets. It did, we didn't know all the dwarf planets at the time. 
it shows that the spacecraft came the third one. It shows one of the planets has rings. We now know that all the gas giants have rings. Uh, uh, so that's, that's, that turns out to be not quite right. It shows uh, the uh, Voyager, or not the Voyager, but the Pioneer right there with two people standing next to it uh, to give a sense of scale as to how big we are compared with... Uh, um, the uh, spacecraft, uh, and and so then it shows a hydrogen molecule right here, and hydrogen molecule has a particular uh, um, wavelength uh, of that it gives off, and then in binary code dots and dashes, it it shows uh, distances to several pulsars, which are are things that that that. Uh, pulse at very regular rates. So th these are this is sort of like triangulating. Where does this thing come from? And so uh, that that was the plaque. Now the thing is, this plaque was not without controversy. Uh, there were some scientists saying this is silly. It, no one's going to ever find this thing. Other people were saying, well, it's taking the place of a scientific instrument that could be on there because it does weigh a little bit, um, um, and it's just kind of like you know, no one's going to ever find it. Um, the other thing, though, is they actually had a lot of people come out against it, and they had congressional hearings about this plaque and so forth, not because the uh, waste of money or anything, because the plaque was actually donated not with taxpayers' money, you know, but with, with private money to pay for the thing. Uh, what they were really arguing about was that uh, the people were not wearing clothes. And so uh, that, that was really what got people upset about this plaque. And so it turned out what was supposed to be kind of this cool thing, we're sitting this thing out into deep space, uh, it turned out to be a public relations nightmare for NASA. And so they kind of regretted in the end that they'd sent this plaque. Okay. Uh, nonetheless, there are two of these plaques, one on Pioneer 10, one on Pioneer 11, um, heading out of the solar system.